but we often encounter hurdles in the form of challenging individuals. We've all been there, both in our personal and our professional lives. To help us navigate these testing people is Karen Donaldson, who never tests me. She's lovely. Um, let's start right off the bat with any insights you have about this particular topic. Definitely. When it comes to dealing with challenging individuals, it's a fusion of three things. Yeah. Assertiveness, uh -huh. empathy, and strategic communication. You know, when it comes to dealing with perceived difficult or challenging individuals, here are three ways that you can do it. Okay. Choice A is you can choose to ignore them fully or change how you respond to them. Yep. Choice B is you can verbally let them know that we're having difficulty. Yeah. Or the third choice is, you know, trying to understand them and maybe making a friend out of that situation. Okay, interesting. And I like that you started with perceived. Yes. Perceived. Okay, so we're going to start with choice A. Uh, which is try to ignore them. You got it. And also change how you respond to them. So talk to us a bit about that. Definitely. No more knee-jerk reacting. Yes. Because here's the thing, Tracy. We are only responsible for our behavior and our responses. Mm -hmm. So when someone challenges you with their difficult behavior, you get to choose how you respond to them. Yeah. So the first thing we need to check is ourselves. And we need to ask ourselves this question. Is this person that I'm labeling as difficult actually difficult or do they simply just operate differently than me? Mm -hmm. Or the other question is this, if you decide that they are difficult, in, in truth difficult, what about them makes them difficult? And really observe that. And if it is, yeah. you try to avoid those interactions. You can walk away when it starts to happen. Right. But I have a question for you here. Yes. So I want you to think of someone who you have labeled difficult or challenging in your life, personal mm -hmm. work. Just think about it. Do not mm. name them out loud. Please. I would never. Perfect. <laughs> I would Perfect. never. And I want you to ask yourself, what about them makes them difficult or challenging to you? Yeah, this, well, <laughs> um, this particular person, I would say, um, presented very negatively very often and had a hard time looking inward about that, had a hard time owning that. Um, and so the energy was always off. I gotcha. Yeah. Now, in that moment, was it actually difficulty, or is just did you operate different ways? We operated different? in different ways, but okay. it was a difficulty for me because I'm in a situation where now I feel like my energy is being sucked in every single interaction. Right. So eventually it had to get to the point where it's like, okay, I need to make space uh, between me and this person. And that's a great way to look at it, right? Yeah. You either remove them in the other way, when you realize that they're actually different, you do something like this. Mm -hmm. You choose to actively listen to what they have to say, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes difficult behavior comes from people who feel unheard. Absolutely. So your role there is to present an opportunity for you to just listen without judgment in any capacity. Yep. So they feel heard, they feel understood. It doesn't mean you have to agree with them though. Mm -hmm. You can still have a difference of opinions. Yes, yeah. Well, we had many, many, many years of active listening before <laughs> that decision was taken. So for sure, that's important. Um, so changing our perspective about them, is, is, is that a part of what you've just said? Like you're, you're giving them the opportunity to explain if they have felt unheard? Absolutely. Okay, right. all right. Not changing them, changing yourself. Changing, you listen. that's right. Let's look at the second choice uh, for dealing with people that might be challenging for you. Totally. So we're gonna talk about verbally addressing it. So, so verbally you addressing it. Verbally addressing it. Yeah. You have to commit to having a conversation and what's most important is the how. Okay. You have to be able to manage your emotions, yes. right? No difficulty with difficulty. No meeting anger with anger. No yeah. matching energy and with energy. Yeah. You get to control how you respond in different situations, right. right? And sometimes in the midst of it, you get heated. So there is a breathing technique that I want to walk you through. So in the, in the moment, I want yeah. you to respond, right? You're verbally doing so. Okay. So it's a three, four, five. You're inhaling for three. Mm -hmm. You're holding for four, mm -hmm. exhaling for five. Okay. It allows you to reduce your anxiety and stress in the moment. So let's try it. Yeah, actually the audience can try it as well. Absolutely. Yep. All right, <laughs> we're gonna inhale for one, two, three, hold. One, two, three, four, exhale. One, two, three, four, five. And that will put you into a state of calm mm. and get you out of that whole stressful situation. So do that you when you feel like things are rising. You got it. Before you react. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely. I like that you mentioned the whole idea of matching energies because I do hear a lot of people say that that's the way they move through life. Mm -hmm. 
and I don't find that that's very helpful. I find if I'm matching your energy, then we're both spinning, and I don't want to yeah, spin. Sure. So it's like you have to bring what you can bring to the table without just responding, or people will constantly be dragging you through their drama, right? Definitely, and then that's ta them taking control of the situation. You yeah. have control of you. Take yeah. ownership of it. Yeah, we have control of us. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about how to set clear boundaries. Definitely. So here's the thing, you have to be assertive when you say it. Yeah. So set clear boundaries, let someone know what you like, don't like, what you accept, don't accept. Most important, ensure that you maintain your own boundaries. Right. And for those people who can't maintain it, you get some help if it's in the workplace, yeah. right? Reduce the time you spend with them. You yes. have HR and your supervisor. Yeah, and Access those are that. the walls. Uh, what's the last choice uh, to dealing with people who might be challenging? Ah, seek to understand. And this mm. might sound counterintuitive to the whole process. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a friend out of the person I'm difficult with, mm -hmm. but it can be totally effective. And here's why. Most people don't walk around wanting to be labeled as difficult or challenging. Right. So you are showing empathy. You're showing that you're understanding. And sometimes you can understand that root cause because it could come from personal issues, stress, yep. things like that. But here's the most important piece. Mm -hmm. We can't excuse inappropriate behavior. Mm -hmm. So number one, you want to ensure that you're maintaining your well-being and not putting up with any abusive behavior, mm -hmm. conversations, or comments. Really good tips there, Karen. Thank you, Thank you for that.